got him. I got a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good fish, folks. A really good fish. Yo, come on in here, you little Lake Pleasant bash, you. <laughs> come on, son. Oh. Get in here, Moby. <laughs> What a way to start my day. First cast of the day, folks. Look at that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, oh, beautiful Lake Pleasant bass right here. Look at that chunk. He looks like a little football. Beautiful fish. Let's let her go. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, hey, that's the way anybody loves to start their day when they first get here is uh, we had to wait for the wind to come down a little bit. It was really blowing hard this morning. So we're a couple hours getting late, getting out. Let me have a couple more cups of coffee, as you can see, so I'm good to go. And uh, we're at Lake Pleasant, and I love Lake Pleasant. You know, uh, this lake is a lot of fun to fish. The water level fluctuates just like any other lake, but I love the clear water. I love the techniques that I get to throw here to, to catch fish. And one of them today is this kind of a special technique. It's a lot of fun to throw. It's my double bass assassin rig. Soft jerk baits in the fall, folks. And uh, you know, a lot of people talk about how great they work in the spring. Let me tell you something. When those nights start getting cold, brings those uh, water temperatures down on this lake, and I caught him on the short one, by the way. But, and we'll talk about that. But when the, when, the, when the water temperatures start getting, you know, colder and uh, the lake temperature drops, these fish will move up shallow and they're all over the place. They start schooling and chasing shad and, and fun things like that. We're here in the fall and, and uh, you can see what we're fishing here. I just, you know, we're on the main lake. I just started fishing the bank here, but we're just throwing up in the little pockets, things like that. We're gonna go down the bank and see what we can't do. But one of my favorite all-time techniques is that, that bass assassin. You can throw it one at a time if you want to. I'm, I've got it dual right now, a double rig hooked up, and we're gonna show you how to rig that up here soon. Catch, maybe we'll catch another fish on it. Let's start with that first. <laughs> that was our first cast of the day. The first one, eh, could be a fluke, right? Speaking of flukes, flukes work good this way too. This is, this is a bass assassin, but uh, the second one will tell us we're doing the right thing. We'll just keep going down the bank and see what we can't find here. There he is, I got him, I got him. <laughs> oh, he came off, <laughs> he bit me right at the boat. Oh my goodness. Ah. <laughs> he bit me once and I didn't get him. He was just a small one, that's why. Oh my goodness, that is so much fun. We may have found something that's triggering these bass this morning. I like that. I like it a lot. This kind of technique you got to do, you know, take your time with it. It's not something you're going to head down the bank doing 100 miles an hour with. I do kind of a twitch and then a twitch, twitch, twitch. Let it fall. You want to make this bait look like it's dying. And it's two of them now. So what's really cool about this particular technique is these baits intertwine just like this. And, and so it looks like shad or something flurrying across there. And man, these bass can't stand it. You know, we're fishing kind of steep areas right now because we're in clear water and I know how Lake Pleasant is. It's, you know, um, they're in the shallows two minutes and then they're gone and it, on those flats, it's hard. We'll still fish the flats because you want to check them out. But I like the steeper stuff with the, with the long points coming out as you're going back. And we're going back into a cut, just so you know. This is kind of a pocket back in here. Uh, so it's not like we're on the main, main lake, but <clears throat> they're, gonna, they're gonna push these shad back in here and feed on them eventually, and they'll be busting them back there in the back and things like that. But these fish that are moving and roaming, we're gonna catch them on the way in. Got him! Got him! Good fish! <laughs> Come on! 
second one, you little dude. Oh, I think I got two of them. I got two of them, folks. I got two fish. That's why you threw this rig. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is exactly why you throw this rig. I gotta get one in so I can get the other in. Come here. Come here. <laughs> yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about, son. Yeah. Beautiful Lake Pleasant bass. Remember I told you they schooled together this time of year, and this is proof of it right here, huh? This is proof. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And this is why you throw that double bass assassin ring. Oh, okay, now, let's figure this out. This one looks like it'll come out quicker. There we go, okay. We'll let that one go. Folks, these are two, two and a half pound bass. Beautiful fish. Ah, see you, buddy. Thank you, guys. No wonder you guys felt like a five pounder. Look at that. Ooh. There you go. There's a second one. Go join your buddy. Go on and tell him thank you. Make me look like a star. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. You know what? That's what I love about fishing right here. People are like, man, you always get so excited. You know why? Because of stuff like that. Going out, trying to figure out what these bass are doing and opening up the lock, you know, to the the, using the right key to open up the lock to catch these fish is so much fun. And uh, that's what keeps me going, you know? I love it so much. All right. Wow, that was a lot of fun. Let's talk a little bit about this rig. I think you'll en enjoy. It's kind of a unique type of rig. Let me get this untangled. Whoo, man, I'll tell you, that gets your juices flowing, don't it? So we're using the Bass Assassin. It's, a, it's an awesome soft jerk bait. It has a little bit different action than say your big uh, super fluke. Now, people ask me all the time, well, why don't you use that super fluke? And I'm gonna tell you why. I use it. But the thing is, is everybody uses it. I like using something just a little different than what they're using, you know? And, and so if, if a lot of people like throwing it, that's great. And I'm, I know it works just as well, but so here, here we got a 17 pound test, and you could use braid, some guys use braid, but a 17 pound test main line, okay? And on that main line, I've knocked it down, because we're in clear water, to two 12 pound. You can use 14, okay, because you're kind of throwing reaction, but two 12 pound liters. You notice I've got a swivel, well, let's get that going here. I have got a swivel on this particular one that just kind of slides up and down. Do you see that on the main line, okay? Then I've tied on probably a two foot, three foot, well, probably two foot, uh, 18 inches, two foot <clears throat> leader, and then tied that on with a four aught owner hook, okay? Big beasty hook there. All right, so what I've also done was I put a bobber stop up here and I kind of sling it down a little bit. And the reason why I threw the bobber stop up there is that when I throw this out there, if I was to throw this bait without that bobber stop, a lot of times if when you're making that long swing to throw this double rig out, this piece will slide way up the line and it just starts doing this rapid. You just don't get near the cast. It just doesn't work right. So I put a little bobber stop up there to stop that from happening. All right, so that'll keep it down there. <clears throat> then I got another swivel hooked up, all right, with another leader. And you can see this one's a little bit longer. And I'm using a, a, a four-aught hook on this as well, owner hook. And it's a, just a little bit longer. And uh, it doesn't have to be that much longer. You can see the difference right there, a couple inches. Some guys tie them, you know, the same way, but I, I, I like them just a little bit longer, one longer than the other one, and it works really good that way. They both have a 12 pound, and the reason why I'm using 12 pound again is in this clear, clear water, you gotta have that. So that's important. You gotta use a medium heavy, your spinnerbait rod or, or something even a little longer with a heavy action if you want, 
Um, I like the medium heavy because I like the tip action. So when I feel the bite, he's got a chance to inhale the bait and then I can set the meat to him with the bottom part of it with this Taipan Elite Series rod. It's got a lot of backbone to it. So it's awesome. You want to try to throw the longest rod you have. You know, if you have a, this one's a 7.6. So that's why I like throwing this. So I can make my leaders a little longer. You might have to make your leaders a little shorter if you're throwing like a 7.2 you know, seven foot two inch uh, fishing rod. And then you team that up with a <laughs> this Bass Pro Platinum Series reel and you got it made. It's fast enough to keep up with everything and, and you're good to go. But that's my rig. And I'll tell you what, you'll catch fish on it. Son, you jump in front of me like that, you know I'm pulling out the the good stuff. Look at that, look at the size of those fish out here. Those are the kind of fish that are out here chasing them shad, see? Look at that. Beautiful bass. <laughs> now what I did on that particular move was I had to bring it in a little faster because when you, like I said, when you see them chasing the shad, it's when you start working it a little bit faster on the surface. And they just blast it. But the, still the cool thing is, you got two rigs out there, you got a chance to catch two bass. Look at the size of that fish. Beautiful bass. Just a beautiful bass. Oh my goodness. Let's let it go. Let's get ready for the next one. <laughs> you know, we came into an area back here and we were working the banks pretty good. And I'm like, man, they seem to have left the bank, banks a little bit. And then all of a sudden they're busting in the middle a little bit. And it's always fun when you see them do that. They corral them in these cuts and coves, and when you see them boil up, the, the ticket is though, when you see them boil up, you gotta be right in there on top of them. If they're, if, the, if it's already been a few seconds, it's like they dive up and they come, they, they go up and then they come down. A lot of fish will go up, hit shad, like they're busting shad, and then they'll, they'll swim down and then they'll turn around just to be sure there's nothing fluttering down and that's when your bait should be hitting and they go back up after it. So it makes it a lot of fun. You know, when you're twitching this thing back to the boat, it's very important to learn how to do it instead of just pulling on the bait and keeping your line tight all the time. You have to remember that you gotta give it real quick twitches and let slack in your line. That allows the baits to fall and do what they need to do. If you don't have the slack in the line, they kind of pull with you and they don't fall right. This one's pretty tore up. I'm gonna change it out real fast. I got a new one here, and this is a great tip if you want to catch more fish on these things. They got a thick body to them, but they also have a groove in these bass assassins. So what I do is I take the hook, bury it into the head of the bait, just like so. Well, yeah, just like so, until you hit the curve, the bend of the hook, and then you pull it out, then you take, turn it back in, and bring that, bring that bait right over the eye of the hook. That's important to do that. Now, that little groove is made there so you can get this hook all the way up through the bait. Pinch it up, bring the hook through. See how I got the hook through? You don't want the hook exposed though because it's, for some reason I don't get near the bites when I do that. But what I do do is skin hook it. Bury the hook, the hook point just barely under the skin. That way when they hit it, this pops right out, the hook will pop right out, and boom, you hook the fish. If you leave the hook buried in the fat part of this too far, it's gonna be hard to hook those fish because they'll hit it, they'll feel the pressure and let go. So as soon as you give pressure, a lot of times that hook pops right out of the, just the bare, I call it skinning it, and, and you hook the fish. So that's very important to do that, it's a great tip, and uh, that's how I'm hooking a lot of those fish that are just barely hitting it. You can't really throw treble hooks on the bottom of this as a trailer. Some guys like to do it when they're throwing a single one you can get away with. 
But the reason why you can't on these is because you'll get it hung up on the other line a lot of times and they'll all come in all boogered up. So you want to make sure that you just skin hook it and you'll be just fine. And make sure that hook is in the center of the bait. Don't make, make sure it's not on the side. If it's on the side when it comes out, it's going to make the, the bait twirl. It's not going to run right. So make sure that hook is right in the center. Skin it and you're good to go. Ooh, I got him. I got him. I got that one. <laughs> wow, he's giving it to me now. <laughs> what I got? Did I end up with two of them on there or something? Or is it just the one? I got two. I got two again. Folks, I got two. <laughs> one's a striper and one's a largemouth. Get in here. <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about, son. Look at that. <laughs> oh, so we know the striper in there too. Look at that beautiful bass. We'll let him go first. Did I tell you you can catch a striper on that too? I guess I forgot to mention that. Come here, dude. I don't want to get stabbed by you. Look at that. See a striper? <laughs> Folks, I threw right out there on that point where I saw him jumping. And it was just exactly what I was talking about. If you throw past the point a lot of times, you can get those fish to come up. And uh, I made the right twitch and, and he hit it. That's the thing is you can sit around and wait, especially when you know they're boiling up every so often. Sit around and wait and watch what happens. And, and it's a fun way to fish, it really is. You can catch them on flutter spoons, whatever, but this is a fun way to catch them too, you know? And when it dies down, you go down the bank and start doing what you were doing earlier. But you know the fish are in the area, especially when you got striper also hitting them. The shad are here. Man, what a blast I have had today at Lake Pleasant. You too can have this much fun in the fall <laughs> on these soft jerk baits, man. You'll have a lot of fun doing this and uh, watching the fish explode or even just feeling it and then feeling the other one hit it too when you catch two at a time is just a lot of fun. Not very often do you get the chance to catch two at a time here at Lake Pleasant. And today we did that a couple of times and had a lot of fun really in a short amount of time. <laughs> so uh, I'll tell you what, get out here, try Lake Pleasant during the fall with these soft jerk baits and you'll have a lot of fun with them, man. I'll tell you what, that Bass Assassin is one of my all time favorites. You can still do the same thing with a Zoom Super Fluke as well, but that that's just a kick. It's really a lot of fun. Rig it the way I said to rig it, you'll catch a lot of fish and uh, you'll have a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us on the water. We'll see you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks.